How do you solve the quadratic equation 4x squared minus 12x plus 9 equals 0? Well, the first thing when you're asked to solve a quadratic equation that I like to do is to factor if you can. Now, there's a long way of factoring called decomposition, and I'm going to do that here for you, although there is a shortcut that applies here called difference of squares. I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to 36. That's 4 times 9 and then they need to add to negative 12. Well, if they need to multiply to positive 36, I need them both to be negative. The numbers are negative 6 and negative 6. That's two of the same number. From that point, I copy out my first term, 4x squared. I copy out my last term, plus 9. And I break my minus 12x into minus 6 and minus 6 both x. Those two together, it's tempting to combine those like terms and make the minus 12x, but we are decomposing it just so we can factor by grouping. What I mean is, take out the greatest common factor from the first two terms. 4 and 6 are both divisible by 2, and they both have an x in it. Then I'm going to divide each of those terms by that greatest common factor. 4 divided by 2 is 2. x squared without one of the x's is x. And negative 6x divided by 2x gives me minus 3. That's negative 6 divided by 2 and x divided by x, which means they cancel out. Here, between 6 and 9, I've got a greatest common factor of 3. And I always use this symbol to decide whether or not the, whether the greatest common factor I'm pulling out is positive or negative. I basically copy that sign there. It's always the second sign, unless you have a negative out front. But anyways, it's that sign that I'm copying down. It's negative 6x divided by negative 3. Positive 9 divided by negative 3. And you'll know you're on the right track if your two brackets match. Now, this is one term, and this is one term. What do they have in common? Well, they both have this 2x minus 3. So I'm going to pull those out as a greatest common factor, just like we did above. And then I put the leftovers into a second set of brackets. Nice. There you go. Now, you might note that those are the same thing. So you can write it as 2x minus 3 times itself. That's squared equals 0. And I should also let you know that at once you get to a point where your two magic numbers, the ones that multiplied to 36 and added to negative 12, if the two magic numbers are the same number, then there's probably a shortcut to go straight here. That shortcut here was called perfect square trinomial. If you know the shortcut, you're probably allowed to jump straight there. But hey, decomposition always works as long as it's a factorable equation. Now, how do you actually solve this? Well, the way you solve a quadratic is to set each of the terms equal to zero itself. Here we've got something times something equals zero. So that means either this or that had to have been zero as well. There's no two things that multiply to zero where one of them isn't zero. One of them has to be zero. So 2x minus 3 has to be 0, and actually that's the exact same thing, so I only have to write it once. I'm going to move minus 3 to the other side to make it plus 3, and I'm going to divide both sides by 2, so x is 3 halves. Done! That's the solution. There's only one x-intercept here. Now there are two other ways to solve a quadratic equation. The one that some people, well, most kids aren't a fan of, is called completing the square. It's normally a technique to get the vertex, and then from there you can use opposite operations to solve for x. The other option is the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula, which I'm sure you're familiar with, negative b plus or minus squared or b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, you can just plug in 4 and negative 12 and 9 into that formula, but it is an absolute behemoth. And if you can avoid it, you probably should. If you are able to factor, 
It's definitely the preferred way of solving these. Thanks for being with me, and best of luck.